Okay, good afternoon, students. Have you gone through the material? Any doubt in the provided material? Ma'am, uh, I have a doubt uh, that uh, portion you shared yesterday uh, in that uh, 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 patterns and uh, uh, UML class diagram and uh, all other things are there. So only we have yeah. to read over. Or, uh, do we need to read also that? Uh, yes, I mentioned was the subject. What, what ma'am? The syllabus is already shared. Yeah, the syllabus is already shared with you. And the portion, the subject is common subject with CSC as well as ISC. So we have to follow the portion which is uh, mentioned in this coordinator because the post, uh, portion paper will be common for both CSC and ISC. CSC three sections they have. Okay. So whatever the, uh, I told whatever I covered for uh, ISC students and sir said this will be the portion uh, based on this portion we are going to set the uh, question paper. So the topics what they mentioned is it's not uh, uh, patterns you are talking the patterns we already discussed in module one also it's uh, not uh, again we are going to study the patterns in detail types of patterns like MVC pattern singleton pattern each and every pattern patterns anti patterns elements all those things in again once again in the module three also now whatever topics mentioned is the common uh, topics. We are going to revise and uh, already we discussed more than 15 classes so far. The same topics we are going to discuss today as well as tomorrow also. So need not worry about, uh, we are not going to take uh, patterns in uh, different types of patterns. It's only the introduction part. Okay, need not worry about the patterns and other content. Okay, ma'am. Okay, only this much students or any student is uh, to join. Shall we start the class? Okay, anyhow here, the sorry, some network issue. And, uh, so we'll start, revise the content and topics.
Can you able to hear, see the screen? Yes, ma'am. The screen is visible to you all. Yes. So we were all uh, discussing about the basic concepts of UML and so the same topics we are going to once again revise. Okay, in uh, today's uh, revision class, we are going to discuss what is object-oriented methodologies. Especially, uh, we already discussed the UML is based on the three uh, people's contribution. The uh, unified approach of, unified means the combined concepts of Rambach, Bush and Jacobson. We already discussed Rambach proposed object management techniques, OMT concepts, and Bush proposed macro and micro concepts and Jacobson's use case models. So the concepts of OMT, Bush object-oriented software engineering, and Jacobson's use case models, all three together, we are getting the unified modeling language where we have the nine diagrams and other um, object-oriented representations. So if you take what is Rambach and what he proposed, what is the part of uh, 
uh, Rumbach's contribution in the U UML means he proposed object modeling technique. So uh, that is called OMT. Object modeling te technique is proposed by uh, Rumbach. So what is object modeling technique means? Uh, a method for analysis, design, and implementation by the object-oriented techniques. So by using this uh, Rumbach's OMT technique, we can analyze, design, and implement the objects and classes and other related constructs. It is very fast intuitive approach for identifying and modeling all objects making up the system. And uh, he proposed class attributes, methods, inheritance, association can be expressed in an easy way using the object modeling concept. He uh, provides uh, dynamic behavior of the objects can be described using the OMT dynamic models. We already discussed in UML, we have uh, static models as well as dynamic models. So the static models means the object diagrams, uh, sequence diagrams, state chart diagrams, those diagrams will uh, show the current state of an class or object. So that will come under dynamic models. Say the compo uh, component diagrams, class diagrams, and uh, deployment diagrams will show the static entity. So it is called static uh, models. So he proposed a detailed specification of state transitions and the descriptions with a, within a system. So by using his uh, modeling concepts, we can easily see and identify what is the state of an process. So when a transaction is going on, say if you take the example as ATM transaction processing, when a credit process is done, what is the what are the transactions happening? What is the state of balance, credit, debit, and other attributes? So like that, the state of any ongoing process can be easily represented by using the state transition diagrams and the event-based diagrams like sequence diagrams and uh, use case diagrams. Uh, in the object modeling technique proposed by Rambak, he's having four uh, phases. So we know very well any software process or implementation we have, the analysis phase, design phase, and implementation phase. So we usually will say ADD, IE, model. So every project will have the analysis phase, design phase, coding phase, and a deployment phase. So the same phases he proposed in a different way. What are the four phases he proposed to mean? Uh, it can be analysis where the objects, dynamic and functional models can be easily identified and represented. So during the analysis phase, we'll identify the objects and the dynamic state of various functions and the various uh, functional attributes of any process can be represented by using analysis phase. Uh, during design, system design, basic architecture of the system. So how the system will look like? What are the internal components? What are the internal functions? What is the input? What are the processes we are going to do? What will be the expected output? That can be easily fixed by using the design. So design means the pictorial or graphical model or graphical representation of your proposed project. So analysis means we can say it is a uh, diagram or it is an algorithmic steps or we can say the pseudo code, it's free from any language. If it is design means, uh, we will have the pictorial representation or graphical model of your proposed project. And the third one is object design because uh, our uh, we are focusing the object orientation and the UML representations, uh, object and classes places an important role. So the object design is very, very important. So we have to identify the, uh, what are the static properties, what are the dynamic properties, functional models, and objects of any proposed project. So that is called object design. Then we'll have the implementation. Implementation means coding or writing the programs, line, lines of code, uh, writing the lines of code according to the given sequence of processes. While writing the code also, we have to think about reusability. So if any code is should be repeated again and again, we should go for the recursive functions or we'll go for the uh, call by value, call by or pointers or max. So, simply coding and extensible and post code. So, instead of starting the project from the last line, we can make modules from other projects also. And whatever writing project be in a usable form and a reusable form, it should have the option for update after one year, two years, the provisions for extensibility, updation, reusability, change of uh, changing the constraints that would be available. 
So these are the four phases proposed by Rambert's object management technique. And within this object over management technique proposed by Rambert, it's having a different. So the what are the three parts means? Uh, we already discussed uh, the uh, system view, object view, as well as the in internal view model and system. The same way in OMT modeling, we have object model, dynamic model, and functional model. So first we have to think about the object because the uh, objects are the core of any object-oriented project. So we have to identify the proper classes and our respective objects. So that is based on the object model where we focus object model and data dictionary. What are the attributes? And what are the how the objects are created, which is private, public, protected, all those things will be fixed and analyzed during object modeling state. And the second modeling is dynamic model. So the state diagrams, events, flow diagrams that should be designed using dynamic model. So we have to differentiate what are the static parts of your project, what are the dynamic parts of our project. Uh, accordingly, if it is in static one, that, that should be represented using the corresponding class diagram or component diagram. If it is a dynamic component, that should be represented by using the state chart diagrams or uh, use collabor collaborative diagrams or use case diagrams or sequence uh, diagrams. And the functional model that should be represented using data flow and constraints. So uh, every class or object will have its own functions that function should be properly represented by using how the data is flow uh, used pro processed within the function. So that will be fixed by data flow and the various constraints. What is the minimum value, maximum value? What is the boundary conditions? When the exhibition will happen? And uh, everything, the constraints, uh, conditions, entry condition, exit conditions that should be fixed within the functional model. So if you take the first model, proposed by Rambak is called object modeling technique. And the object modeling technique uh, is uh, based on the following aspects and it focuses on uh, four different phases like analysis phase, the design phase, ob uh, object design phase and implementation phase. Within the OMT, we have three different parts. So the three different parts are object model, dynamic model and functional model. So any doubt in what is uh, Rambak uh, concepts, what he proposed, what is his contribution in the unified modeling language. So if you take object model, a yes, structure of object in a system. So what is object model means? Uh, what is the, how, what is the object and what are the attributes within the object? What are the functions within the object? Because we know object is instance of a class. So the, each class will have the set of attributes and set of functions. So the structure of the object in a system should be fixed. Identity relationships to other objects, attributes and operations should be fixed. And the object diagram should be drawn with respect to the proposed object. So we'll identify what is the class. Within the class, we'll represent class name, attributes and functions. From the classes, you will create the number of objects. Each object will have the same set of attributes and functions. So you have to fix uh, what is the structure of the object and how the object is going to interact with other objects and um, what are the operations it's going to perform. So that is based on object model. So uh, what is object diagram means? So we already discussed there are nine diagrams in UML, class diagram, object diagram, use case diagram, sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, state chart diagram. And uh, uh, like that we have nine diagrams, a deployment diagram, like that state mission diagram, like that we have nine diagrams. So what is the role of object diagram means? It represents the picture, pictorial or graphical view of your object. So classes inter, uh, interconnected by association lines. So if you draw a class di object di diagram, we'll have one object, another object, all the objects will be mentioned. How one object is interacting with the other object should be clearly stated through the association line and cl uh, classes, a set of individual objects. So we know very well a class is a collection of objects. All the objects belongs to the same class will come under the one category. And the association lines represents the relationship among the classes like objects of one class to objects of another class. Say for example, if you take the 
object diagram what are the symbols we will use means we'll have the processes will be represented using using oval symbol and um, the data flow will be represented with the direction a solid line and data stores will be represented within uh, two parallel lines like a rectangle and external entity will be represented using source or destination of the data element so by using uh, these symbols we will try to represent the association among the classes and objects so while drawing any object diagram we have to draw the the standard symbols object diagram will, be, will look like a rectangle with two uh, columns first column will represent the attributes second column will represent the set of functions and what is uh, omt dynamic model means the state current state of uh, state and transitions events and actions performed using the objects will be represented by using object modeling dynamic model so by using state transition diagram we will uh, draw the uh, dynamic state of a process uh, as well as the events whether the order is placed order is delivered or order is dispatched or cancelled so each and every event yes or no conditions will be represented by using the events and actions performed will be re represented by using dynamic models the omt state transition diagram network of states and events it shows how the objects are interacting with each other to complete a task how where the order is placed where, who is accepting the order how the order is accepted how the payment is done how the product is delivered so the each and every state of the trade state transition will be represented by using dynamic models so if you take the object modeling uh, functional model uh, usually we will use the data flow diagrams so that shows how the data is uh, transferred among different uh, different modules of our uh, with various modules uh, to process the data so it shows the flow of data between different processes in the business uh, what is the input the input is given to which module and how it is processed and the, how the output is given to another module where it is stored where the data is updated and how the data is uh, given to the front end the interaction between the front end processing module and the back end and how the data is uh, transferred from one module to another module to get the process done will be represented by using functional module a simple and intuitive method for describing business processes without focusing on the details of the computer system so whatever is happening inside the uh, project that will be totally hidden from the end user say for example if you are doing a credit process or a debit process in an atm system so what's happening in the back end what are the functions executed and how the data is retrieved from the back end data database that is totally hidden from the end user or the customer they will see only the screen monitor but they don't know what's happening how the money is uh, only we will hear some sound the currency counting or something or some sounds alone we will the whatever process is internally happening we will hear only few sounds we don't know actually how the data is accessed how the data is updated how the table is uh, uh, giving the data from back end to front end that is totally hidden from the end user so the object modeling omt functional model describes how the transactions are performed using the uh, pictorial representation so if you go for a data flow diagram dfd so the dfd is called a data flow diagram. this dfd also into the unified modeling so the data flow diagrams so the data the three concepts the modeling concepts dynamic modeling concepts object uh, diagram concepts of technique uh, scientists called so any doubt in what is a omt model and what are the uh, in the omt model we have 
four phases analysis this system design object design and implementation and three different parts object model dynamic model and functional model so those things comes under rambak omt techniques so the next technique is called proposed by the second scientist called bush it's called bush methodology so the bush methodology is based on object oriented it is widely used by object oriented methods and uh, use uses the object paradigm so object paradigm means the classes objects and other related constructs and converts the design and analysis phase of object oriented system and criticized for its large set of symbols so the bush methodology is having object oriented software engineering concepts as well as object oriented business management concepts and he is he, he is having its own object oriented system design concepts so uh, the, the following diagrams so whatever we are using in the uml the class diagram object diagram state transition diagrams module diagrams process diagrams interaction diagrams we already discussed there are nine diagrams in the uml uh, except the case diagrams uh, the using class object state transition module notations this is bush methodology and the bush methodology is uh, divided into two subdivision dynamic models and static models the same way in bush methodology also we have two set of uh, processes the one is called macro development process the second one is called micro development process so if you would see the internal minor aspects that comes under macro development process and micro development process focuses on the main functions so what is macro development process means controlling the framework for the micro process so if some uh, process is going on what are the internal micro processes we need to through the constraints and other uh, various uh, conditions the ma micro processes are controlled the primary concern technical management of the system so the overall technical management is con uh, controlled by the micro development process so in micro development process what are the things we are fo uh, focusing on means conceptualization analysis and development of the model design or uh, design or create the system architecture evolution or implementation and maintenance the same steps so we will have the analysis design development coding and Im implementation uh, the same way conceptualization me means uh, it's like analysis take the conceptual or uh, abstract concepts then analyze and develop the model once you got the idea or problem statement or the given scenario you need to analyze and according to the analysis go for the development of the model then design or create the system architecture based on the analysis to go for the design design means the pictorial view flow chart or diagrammatic uh, diagrams the uml diagrams proposed by the say uh, like a class diagram object diagrams so that is called design or create the system architectural model and the evolution of the evaluation or implementation based on the model go for the implementation implementation means the coding then occur once the coding is done you maintain deploy the project and maintain and uh, update the content so these are the steps proposed under macro development process proposed by bush so in bush we have macro development process and micro development process the six diagrams are proposed by bush so in macro development process we follow the uh, basic concepts like conceptualization analysis design evaluation and implementation and maintenance what is uh, so in micro development process each macro process has its own micro development process so uh, macro means somewhat bigger one so micro means uh, what is the uh, uh, how we will measure micro 10 to the power of minus my 10 to the power of uh, 3 is called micro macro means maybe 10 to the power of 1 
what is the value for uh, micro microseconds uh, milliseconds so uh, the macro development process as its own micro development process so the micro development processes are subset of the macro macro means a bigger one inside that we have the micro so if you if the process is bigger one you subdivide it into small small uh, subsections so what are the steps we'll follow in a micro development process means identify the classes and objects identify the classes and objects semantics what is semantics so we'll use, often we we'll use the words syntax and semantics syntax means say if you are writing a for loop or a defining a class we have the condition say class class name followed by opening bracket closing bracket semicolon within that we'll specify private public protected attributes functions so the semicolon comma opening closing all those things will come under syntax semantics means the not only the syntax is important the meaning associated with the uh, class declaration or for loop whether it's properly uh, whether uh, what is the meaning behind the each and every executable statement that is called semantics so identify classes and objects relationship so how many classes we are using how from each class how many objects we are going to uh, create and how the objects are going to interact with each other what will be the relation between the classes and objects identify class objects interfaces and implementation so identify classes and objects objects and classes semantics relationships interfaces and implementation these are the things we need to uh, focus while creating any micro my micro level in micro level while creating each and every class and object we have to consider these aspects whether the class and object is relevant one what is the semantics behind the class or object how the uh, what is the relationship between the classes and objects how they are going to interface and implement implemented in our coding what is the role responsibility why we are creating it how it is going to be going to be used in our project so these things we need to consider while creating any micro development process so any doubt so far uh, in the bush methodology bush is an um, author or scientist he worked in the rational rose corporation i think still he is alive and uh, he proposed uh, he he only created and implemented stated the nine diagrams how the class diagram will look like how the object diagram should be drawn how the state transition diagram should be represented and how the mo modules uh, should be represented in every uh, class because previously we were using only flow charts so in flow charts we cannot represent classes objects uh, use cases that is a highly that will create complications so he, they go on for different notations different symbols different way of representing uh, the diagrams so the six diagrams process diagrams these six diagrams are proposed by the created and drawn designed by the bush so uh, along with this uh, he proposed to macro level development process as well as micro level level development process and uh, he defined what are the steps we need to consider while creating the macro level development process and uh, in e each micro level uh, development process how it should be what are the things we need to consider while designing the micro development process so these concepts are comes under bush methodology the next third author is called ivar jacobson so the book what we are following now uh, object oriented analysis and design ali brahmi so that book also based on the ivar jacobson he is having its own one more book the based on iva jacobson's book only the tali brahmi book also uh, redesigned so what is uh, jacobson's role in object uh, in a uh, in our uh, object oriented analysis and design means he only proposed use cases he proposed object oriented software engineering concepts and he proposed object oriented business engineering concepts so the use case models are proposed by jacobson and the uh, diagrams Uh, remaining six diagrams are proposed by bush the first uh, uh, concepts are proposed by rampak so by combining 
all three people's co contribution we got nine diagrams associate things relationships and associations and other use case modeling concepts so the use case modeling concepts are proposed by jacobson i were jacobson so in a use case modeling concepts what it means means the simplest diagram in object oriented analysis and design is called use case diagrams so we'll have only two notations stick figure and functions functions are presented in oval symbol and you users say the administrator students uh, the people uh, other um, any human being will be represented using stick figure stick uh, stick figure and how the user is going to interact with the system modules the system functions are represented within oval symbols only a association line will be mentioned so the understanding the system requirements the use case diagrams are used interaction between the users and system can be easily represented by using use case diagrams the use case description must contain how and when the use case begins and ends how where we are logging in and what are the transactions we are performing how we are logging out from the system so the starting state and ending state of the process should be clearly mentioned the interaction between the use cases and its actors actors means the end users the stick figures including when the interaction occurs and what is exchanged so what what is given by the user to the system and the system what the output the system is providing to the end user so what is input what is output from the system should be clearly mentioned using labels and how and when the use case will need a data stored in the system exceptions to uh, the flow of events and how and when concepts of the problem domain are handled so all those things should, should be clearly mentioned in the use case diagrams uh, this ppt already i uploaded in google classroom the repres class representative is there yes ma'am yeah this ppt already i uploaded because uh, each uh, we have four sections totally each uh, subject teacher is sharing different different pptts so that's what i already uploaded all the relevant pptts so uh, this ppt what i am uh, what we are discussing it's already in google classroom or not have you checked yes. your google classroom one second ma'am okay anyhow if it is not shared i will share you now this one is not there ma'am but all are interrelated only but uh... no concepts regarding this omt and uh, this micro and micro I, shared, so I think i shared but uh, uh, same diagrams and other things maybe different version ma'am share this one also yeah yeah definitely okay so any doubt so far the subject is easy only the thing is you need to understand what is what and uh, the, uh, there are three people always associated with object oriented analysis and design you should remember what, who proposed what so if it is a um, uh, use case diagram you should always remember ivo jacobson if it is a macro and micro level processes it is proposed by bush the six diagrams bush the rambak uh, he is uh, object modeling concepts rambak is always omt Ivo Jacobson is use case models, and Bush is six use case uh, six diagrams: class diagram, object diagram, you state chart diagram, sequence diagrams, and he talks about micro and macro level processes. Uh, Ivo Jacobson talks about OOSE, object oriented soft use case diagrams, and object oriented software engineering is provided by Jacobson. and if you take what is object oriented software engineering it is also very very simple and easy concept only so you know uh, software engineering means uh, it talks about the life cycle stages how we are creating a project when we are starting the project uh, the, that is inception uh, the child initial state development state analysis design development coding and testing so what are the steps inception Uh, elaboration collaboration implementation and uh, reinvention like that, uh, that uh, they will use different different words 
but uh, object oriented software engineering means software engineering deals with structured programming as well as object oriented programming if it is structured now we'll talk about ali's photon copal's c language once uh, c plus plus java python comes now we need object orientation c plus plus java python without object orientation we cannot do anything and we have to use the corresponding object oriented diagrams object oriented databases object oriented software engineering uh, like stages modeling see what you are saying uh, dbms only uh, மெடிக்கல் இமேஜஸ் எக்ஸ்ட்ரே இமேஜஸ் வாய்ஸ் மெசேஜஸ் டேபிள்ஸ் டேட்டா செட்ஸ் யூ கேன் நாட் டூ ஆல் தோஸ் திங்ஸ் வித் ஆர்டிபிஎம்எஸ் ஆர் டிபிஎம்எஸ் or we cannot make use of simply sql mysql we need to go for object oriented database management system like uh, mongodb crunch db neo4g cassandra hadoop framework say especially the facebook twitter instagram linkedin they are all using their own softwares say the facebook is using cassandra and linkedin is using uh, uh, white column databases as well as neo4g kind of databases Uh, because that's what uh, we, we can able to see who viewed your profile the e is your first level fr- first level friend second level friend third level friend so those kind of links and all created using neo 4g it is also an object oriented database management system the same way in uh, designing also once we want to use uh, object oriented because the real time projects we are all using only is java python or c++ we cannot do any project simply using c or c programming photon programming cobol programming and the same way we need uh, to store and process the object oriented data like uh, images uh, emojis pictures comments we need object oriented database tables so the bushes you got the basic idea the thing is you need to understand in broader sense what is object orientation object oriented analysis and design what, what is object oriented software engineering what is object oriented databases so all are interrelated front end back end like that so jacobson methodology talks about object oriented software engineering and object oriented use cases and object oriented business engineering so in that only we so far we discussed use cases so use case diagrams are the simplest diagrams in a uh, uml diagrams so what is uh, object oriented software engineering means uh, software engineering is the process of how to create a software or how to develop a software project it talks about the methods methodologies as well as the diagrammatic representations so the object oriented software engineering it is based on object tree so object tree means object plus factory how we are going to create the classes and objects in an factory setup or in an systematic approach or in an global perspective or in an industry standard you know we talk about industry uh, industrial internet of things industrial uh, engineering or data engineering 4.0 5.0 so standardized international standard projects so that is called object tree is uh, built models so in object tree only they are proposing use case models domain object models analysis object models implementation model and test model so the oose is based on ob- use case models it's mainly focuses on use case models within the use case model only domain domain means say if i am creating a student project it is an education domain if i am creating an hospital based project image processing or uh, detecting and cancer or something it is a the domain is hospital if i am creating an atm project cardless uh, transactions or uh, that is a uh, banking sector and if i am creating a project on logistics uh, they say online booking reservations flight uh, flight uh, reservation or train tra- uh, train book uh, ticket booking so those things comes under logistics or transport so you should understand the domain and where who is the end user to whom we are creating the project 
who is going to use your project what is the uh, what is actually happening in that particular sector so if I, we are creating a project for atm it is in banking sector in banking sector what actually they are doing how the process is manually happening if you understand the scenario what is the rules and regulations who are all the people involved how the customers are interacting with the bank so if you understand the domain then only you can create the project that is called domain object model and analysis of model so whatever object you are identifying in your project you have to property the property attribute for a bank project you are taking like customer name second name date of birth their address whether the field what we are choosing for the class or object is relevant or not relevant so we have to uh, there is separate method also we have to check whether the attributes are proper attributes or not improper attributes the functions are proper functions or improper functions simply you cannot say display get put we have to create bit process balance like we have to take so those things and analysis means once the analysis and design is done you are going for the coding while making the coding also you have to think each and every line each and every statement you are using in your function is a perfect function or not simply you cannot go for for loop or while loop or you have to analyze the context what is the starting state what is the end state how many times we are going to repeat whether we can use a normal variable or pointer variable whether we can go for normal function or recursive function whether we can go for a basic uh, basic class or derived class so like that during implementation also you have to think about in different angle then you have to use the proper uh, executable statement then during testing also we have to check whether the analysis is done properly objectives are fixed the objectives are implemented each and every line is working functional testing alpha testing beta testing black box testing white box testing boundary conditions usability testing so like that there are so many tests should be performed before the product is delivered so you have to uh, while creating any project small or bigger one we have to consider all those parameters say identifying the use case model domain object analysis object implementation testing if you consider all those things during your uh, implementation uh, project implementation then only your product will be your your uh, the pro pro program what you are creating will be to the you know, to the international standard it will be accepted all the and anybody project in a user friendly way so these concepts are in software engineering proposed by who is the person proposed oyc object tree and use case models ivo jacobson so the oyc use case models and object tree is proposed by jacobson methodology and the same way the next concept is called object oriented business engineering here our project what we are discussing is object oriented analysis and design that is our subject within object oriented analysis and design we have to think about the subject in software engineering perspective in the developers point of view as a software engineers point of view one more view is you have to think about the project in business point of view so if i am investing 5 lakhs for the project what will be the 5 lakhs to create the project how much uh, the same project how much i can sell whether i will sell i can sell the project for 10 lakh return on investment cost what is the cost what i am getting users so the constraints so in business perspective you have to think about the project so that uh, concept is uh, discussed under object oriented business engineering so business means buying and selling so if i am say, buying product for 10000 uh, whether it is worth for the 10000 or not the benefit profit those things are discussed under business engineering so this oobe is object modeling at the enterprise level so it is called enterprise resource planning erp enterprise level means 
it's totally based on buying and selling profit and benefit so here what they will do now they will do the uh, analysis phase here also they will analyze so we are going to spend 10 lakhs for this project whether it is it should be accepted by all the board of management all the people stakeholders and uh, they have to approve because uh, the person who is spending the money they will uh, think of the project whether it is useful or not useful how long we can use it how many people will get benefit uh, i am spending 10000 manually if you go for the project i am paying uh, if you automate through this project uh, how many people we can replace how fast we can achieve the output to make to deploy the project how many new systems we need what is the configuration of the system to run the project and any technical upgradation we need, all those things will be discussed. And testing phase also, uh, what are the antivirus softwares and how many testers, how many administrative supervisors, all those people we need, and uh, how much we need to spend on unit testing, integration testing, system testing, basis path testing, all those things will be discussed in business engineering perspective. So any doubt, what is OISC and OOB? So we were talking about Jacobson's methodology. The Iwa Jacobson is a, a scientist. He worked in a rational rose software. He only proposed use case models and OOSE and OOBE concepts. And these um, use cases are uh, nothing but uh, we can easily represent the use case uh, uh, of any project using use case models. Uh, here, uh, the model is very simple model. We'll have the stick figure all the human beings or stakeholders are represented using stick figure and the systems and functions are represented using oval symbols. The interaction between the human being and the system functionalities are represented and associations are mentioned. And here also we'll consider all the object oriented aspects. And in the uh, use case modeling only, we have uh, Jacobson's um, use case modeling only, we have object tree or object oriented software engineering it discusses about use case model domain analysis model implementation model and testing model and is a company means object plus tree create object in factory setup or the corporate things for corporate or industry always think about Business means buying and selling profit, benefit. Organization, national level companies, branches, organizations, enterprise. The enterprise means emergency company. So limited company The screen is visible to you all. Screen is visible. <coughs> Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we were talking about Iowa Jacobson's methodology. So the Jacobson methodology is based on use case modeling as well as object-oriented software engineering concepts along with the business engineering aspects also. So in uh, the use case concepts uh, and the use case diagrams are proposed by Ivor Jacobson. Uh, the diagrams are uh, 
we can easily represent and he talks about software engineering aspects the life cycle stages methods methodologies in core along with the business engineering aspects in business engineering also we are we have to consider the analysis the analysis means algorithmic steps or pseudo code design means the diagrammatic representation implementation means the software coding using programming language it may be c++ python or java so when it comes to object orientation it always starts with object oriented languages like c++ python java c++ vb++ all those things and uh, testing reuse that is a part of any project so we need to perform test test means uh, uh, say we'll have a black box testing white box testing i think in fifth unit we are talk about uh, testing methods only in general white box and black box then unit testing system testing integration testing alpha testing beta testing usability testing basis path testing like that uh, core testing like that we have a number of testing methods automated testing manual testing so the the next topic is called patterns we already discussed uh, patterns in the beginning itself pattern is nothing but in civil engineering terms we will say the blueprint or we will say the simulated model or we can say the miniature model of the project what we are going to do so in software terms we can say the simulated version so if the project is very highly complicated Uh, involves a lot of uh, chemicals or uh, atomic research center kind of things so instead of uh, doing the project in the actual environment we will go for the simulated models or uh, car driving also kids are uh, playing with uh, 3d glass in the 3d environment uh, nowadays we can say the metaverse we are playing the games in the simulated world so like that here patterns means uh, the blueprint or the mold patterns are uh, nothing but we can say the uh, well defined rules and regulations we need to follow while creating a project usually the patterns and protocols are used along with military so the rules and re restrictions rules and conditions are highly we cannot change we cannot deviate even 1% in uh, military rules and other uh, other uh, highly confidential things the same way pattern means we have the pattern Uh, we have to put some the input into the pattern and we have to produce the output the output will come as per the pattern say for example if you have a mold or uh, you are creating a toy with a mold so uh, you put the some raw material it may be plast of paris or it may be the clay you put some clay on the pattern and if you remove the pattern you will get the same image what the actually the pattern is the same way here also the model is highly well defined so if you whatever input if you follow that particular pattern if you give the input to the pattern as per the requirement you will get the exact model so it is an uh, entity to information that captures the essential essential structure and insight of a successful family or proven solutions to a recurring problem that arises within a uh, certain context and system of forces so here Uh, the words are well defined say they are, they are using the words like essential structure essential structure means the structure is fixed if you follow a mold or pattern the same structure will get the essential structure is fixed in the pattern the framework is well defined in the pattern and the successful family of proven solutions how we are making the pattern means they already know they have the uh, notations the symbols the appearance everything is well known so they don't don't want to deviate from the thing so they are fixing the pattern so whatever is fixed in the pattern accordingly so we can, from your pattern we can create a family of same kind of similar kind of outputs and recurring problem so recurring problem means you want to repeat the same process for n number of times then pattern is a very useful one if you want to create different different images you will manually make by using free hand if you want to create the same type of object then we'll go for mold or pattern so if you want to recurring problem if the problem is occurring again and again you want solution for the problem you want to automate the process then you will go for patterns and uh, arise within the certain context so the pattern is uh, the same pattern we cannot use it for all so it is for the uh, particular context say if i am making a toy uh, if i am using an elephant toy elephant pattern i am using 
uh, i will put a different material it may be clay or it may be pasta cloth paris or it may i may use some gold or silver so whatever material i will put but the pattern image will be same so it is it belongs to a certain context if i want uh, instead of elephant toy if i want some other cat then i have to go for the cat pattern if i want elephant toy i will go for the elephant pattern if i want a school structure i will use the corresponding pattern so the words are uh, clearly stated essential structure successful family of proven solutions and recurring problems and for, for the particular context so you want the same kind of solution and the solution is highly proven it's producing the best result it is accepted universally then we will go for the pattern to produce the result so what is the good pattern and how it will look like while create because uh, uh, you when you have, as a software engineer when you go for creating a project you can follow there are uh, because uh, we are doing the software pro projects for long, for the past 50 years or 60 years almost the solution for all the problems are available it may be the project is implemented in c program we can convert the project from c to c++ or we may create recreate the same project it may be created 10 years before uh, again after 10 years uh, we can create the same project with the same analysis design we can go with instead of c we can change the language maybe the project is created for a, a lower version of the configuration now we can go for create convert the same project from desktop system to apple iphone or some other platform android platform so almost the solutions are available for a, almost maybe the solution from one project can be partially used in another project also nowadays i mean industry also they are not creating any project from the scratch they are taking the concepts already available um modules and functions software code from different projects they are customizing and are changing upgrading modifying renaming they are coming out with uh, new solutions so uh, when you go for a uh, pattern uh, what are the regulations if those guidelines are followed that is uh, good practice for form i can i can create the projects projects using the same pattern it is not like that if the pattern is following what are the things to solve your problem so you have a problem you need to want to solve the problem if you give input to you are choosing a pattern if you give input to that particular pattern it will solve your problem and it will produce the expected output a pattern should solve a given problem and accordingly you have to choose the pattern it is a proven concept it should follow the technical aspects it should be already accepted it should be already implemented and used universally accepted it should have the best practices and the steps should be prop used properly so it should have the proven concept and solution is not obvious so we, we, we should not go with a pattern which which may produce the result or which may not produce the result not like that it should produce the result and it describes a relationship it should describe the relationship with the given problem so i have one problem if i use this pattern i will come out with the correct result a pattern has the significant human component it should be applicable to the human Uh, whom he, uh, he is using and it should pr produce the expected output say for example i want to design a particular uh, dress or something so if you go to the tailor you will say i want this particular pattern i want this kind of uh, this much neck this much the hand size everything you will give and the material everything accordingly so if the whether if it is a t-shirt the pattern will be different if it is a full on shirt the pattern will be different so if it is a professional thing so that there are the patterns measurement the material cutting everything is different so like that uh, any problem if you are following any particular pattern that should have the corresponding specifications so a good pattern will do the following thing it should solve one problem it should have the proven concept you should have a systematic approach solution to uh, solution should be universally accepted it should describe the relationship with the problem and the pattern has the significant human component and how the pattern 
will look like and how we can represent it. So a pattern may be a generative pattern or it may be non-generative pattern. So generative pattern means it describes recurring phenomena with say, saying how to reproduce them. So say if I want a thousand, thousand elephant toy, I can go for generative pattern. It will automatically, this a similar kind of thousand elephants I can produce by just by putting the raw material on the pattern. The same way, if I want to pro produce uh, some 10 projects of the similar pattern, similar model, I can go for a particular pattern. If I follow the pattern, pattern means here in software engineering, uh, what are the steps we are following? What is the input? How many processes are there? What kind of output we are producing? So it's all well defined. And the same way, non-generative means it describes recurring phenomenon without saying how to reproduce them. So non-generative, it will also produce the expected result, but uh, it will not recur. It, it may for depending upon the condition, it's like a, a switch case condition. If the condition, uh, say switch, uh, say we'll say now, if the number is one, print Monday, two means working days, non-working days. One means Monday, two means uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like that. So while the condition is switch case, switch to the condition, depending upon the given input but it will produce the result, but not of the same pattern. It will go with the different patterns. So that is called non-generative. Generative means the similar kind of recurring. Recurring means again and again. Say we, people used to say recurring deposit, fixed deposit. Fixed deposit means only one time. Recurring deposit means monthly we need to pay the installment. And uh, a template, pattern itself is a template. And if it is a pattern, what are the elements should be there in a pattern? Say, for example, if it is an application form, we know very well what are the columns will be there in the uh, application form. So there will be some place for date and time, place, name, first name, second name, father name, your personal information, account number. So say there are any voucher or any application form, blank form, we can say it is a pattern or we can say it is a template there will be some column or provision for mentioning all the required information. Say a good pattern template should contain the following information in that particular template. So what are the essential components that should be clearly recognized on reading the pattern? Because we are using the pattern for producing n number of uh, solutions. So it should have the complete information about what we are going to produce. So a pattern should have the pattern name, the problem which it is going to solve, in which context we are using, whether it is an application form or it is a uh, paying sleep or withdrawal sleep or a, a checkbook like that context, whether it is in credit process or a debit process and forces, who are all going to use, who are all the person going to authorize and it should produce some solution and examples. Uh, say so it should give some clarity. So write the date in this form, write the first name, second name, branch, branch name, core branch or the other branch like that. And the resulting content, what kind of, whether it is a paying sleep or withdrawal sleep, what will be the result we are going to get through the pattern. And the rationally, whether it is accepted local voucher or international uh, local check or international check or uh, uh, regional check, the, in which rational region it is belongs to and related patterns. What are the other related patterns available in the same type and known uses, what purpose it is used, where it can be accepted, where it cannot be accepted. So if it is a pattern, the pattern should contain the following components or following elements. If all those elements are there, then only we can say it is an acceptable pattern. So template means the, the form or the framework and a, temp, a pattern means the what, whatever pattern we are going to follow for creating the pro pattern is also a kind of uh, method or methodology. Say we are saying waterfall model, spiral model, win-win spiral model. So like that, the pat, uh, say where is architectural model, object-oriented model, component model, hierarchical model, graph-based models, the same way patterns also a particular model or technique or methodology. So the pattern template should contain name of the pattern, problem, 
context forces solution example resulting context rationally related patterns and known uses if those components are there or mentioned in a pattern then only it will be accepted as pattern otherwise it is incomplete or we can say uh, it is not a pattern it's an ir irrelevant pattern or incomplete pattern so the next thing is called a framework framework also we already discussed uh, in general we will say frame means if you take photo in olden days uh, we used to take photo and we will put a frame glass frame and we'll have the complete boundary four corners will be there uh, it may be in fiber or plastic or what is that uh, nowadays we are coming out with a different uh, we are making the prints in the mugs also in metals also so framework means uh, the a free defined a well defined boundary so a way of delivering application development patterns to support best practices sharing during application development so for any problem to solve that problem if you are going for object oriented methodology we have well defined application methods or we have well defined methods methodologies frameworks patterns so according to the project what we are going to do we have to choose the respective framework method methodology pattern or framework according to the problem what we are going to solve we have to say my project is a wifi based project so i cannot go with a waterfall model or a spiral model i have to go with cloud cloud based models based on some framework based models the framework which supports for cloud services which provides for wifi and iot kind of things so according to the project what we are going to if i am creating a small, small uh, local area network lan based project then i will go for the corresponding object oriented framework which supports classes objects and other use cases so it can be viewed as an implementation of a system of design patterns so the here framework means a group of patterns say for example uh, we can say framework means a family of products if you say iphones initially we had we had iphone 1 2 3 4 5 6 now we had what is the latest version of iphone what is the latest version of iphone iphone 13 14 what what is the latest version of iphone recently re released 13 or 14 govardhan danush mom 14 ma'am yeah 14 so so 14 is so the, uh, the operating system is fixed the almost so the 14 is super set of 12 11 13 so the 14 includes all the features of 1 to 13 in along with that 14 is having its own additional features it uh, the 14 will support for 13 based projects uh, 13 based apps and other uh, uh, softwares also so it's having some additional advanced features then only they named it as uh, apple uh, iphone 14 so it is having some difference with uh, respect to 13 12 all those things the same way if you say take operating system uh, windows initially we had windows 4.0 3.5 then we had windows 75 windows 95 windows uh, 2000 windows xp vistra uh, dual core core to duo octa core penta core all are windows uh, family of operating systems so uh, the same way if you take the window uh, ms word uh, word uh, um, software so it's having uh, uh, word uh, ms uh, word 7 word 6 uh, word uh, 2000 ms word 2000 so they are all family of products or we will say on the shelf products with a, they belongs to the same category all the iphones are belongs to the same category of apple lap, uh, apple operating system sun microsystems sun os and the windows uh, pro, all the operating systems uh, under windows uh, 95 97 2000 vista xp all those things belongs to the same windows operating system category the same way in whatsapp also we have different versions so all uh, all versions belongs to the same family we can say it is in framework the same uh, the product any new advancements will make 
and we will release the new product with add add further version, additional version, but all belongs to the same family or framework that comes under the same framework. So that is called, we can say it is also a pattern. A framework is superset of pattern, can be viewed as an implementation of system of design pattern. They follow the same pattern. All Apple iPhones follow the same pattern. All Windows operating system follow the same pattern, the same, uh, the hard disk we have now processor, CPU. We have 8085, 86, 186, 286, 386, 486, 586, Pentium 1, 2, 3, 4. So like that. So they all uh, all belongs to Intel family, IBM. The same way we have Motorola family, the Motorola processors. So it means the brand, we can say the pattern is also a kind of brand. All belongs to the, all products belongs to the same pattern. Say the, the same way in a, um, automobile sector also they are releasing new new versions of two wheelers and four wheelers under the same brand under the same technology with some few advanced ad advancement some latest uh, automobile two wheeler or four wheeler they will support wi-fi internet connection charging facility uh, gps uh, tracking so uh, each one is having the same uh, same brand same product same technology but uh, with additional Futures. So, any doubt in what is pattern, what is framework? Ma'am, while answering for about framework, can we uh, explain this uh, Bush model uh, framework that he gave uh, that macro development process, which is a framework for micro development process? Yeah, yeah. You have to differentiate here. Uh, we have three methodologies we discussed: uh, Jacobson, Rambach, Bush. They are all three three different topics in your syllabus the same way then we discussed about what is that patterns patterns is a separate topic so here we our pattern is separate topic separate uh, idea it's uh, the pattern is not belongs to bush rambak nothing it is a kind of methodology or we can say it is a kind of object orientation object oriented methods component development methods relational data uh, relational models as well as we studied the component models, uh, first generation, second generation, like that. Pattern is a separate topic. The pattern is not proposed by uh, Jacobson or Ivo. So uh, up to, so if you talk about Jacobson, Jacobson belongs to rational rows. He belongs to use case, uh, he, use case models of OOAC, OOBE alone belongs to Jacobson. The same way, if you talk about uh, Bush, Macro development, micro development, and the nine uh, six diagrams. Six diagrams. Bush, Bush is a scientist. He, uh, he is owner of only six diagrams and the macro and micro development concepts. The same uh, in the micro development process, what are the steps he proposed? Micro development process, what are the steps he proposed? That's all. Its uh, role is over. And if you talk about Iowa Jacobson, his contribution is only use case diagrams, OOSE one OOB. Then we have to talk about what is use case and what is OOSE, OOB, that's all. This pattern is separate topic. Pattern is like classes, objects like that. Pattern is a concept, separate concept. Uh, pattern is not proposed by Ivo Jacobson. It's an independent topic. So if you talk about pattern in this module, we are going to talk about what is pattern uh, well, yeah, what are the what is the use of pattern? What are the elements, components of a pattern? These are the elements that should be present in any pattern. Then how the pattern is uh, classified, generative or non-generative? What is generative? What is non-generative? And what are the elements, essential components or parts of an element, parts of a pattern? If it is a pattern, it should contain the following elements or for the following features or components. If those components are there, so these uh, five slides belongs to pattern alone. It is a separate topic. The pattern is not proposed by uh, all three authors. It's uh, separate. Then uh, framework is superset of patterns. If you group the similar kind of patterns together, then you will get the framework. Framework means it will have the boundary. 
well defined boundary say we are fixing the region na north zone south zone uh, say the uh, district uh, every district every city is having its own border like that framework is having its own border if anything goes beyond that border that not belongs to the particular framework the same way a pattern also it's having its own predefined boundary or conditions if those uh, conditions are fulfilled then only we will call it as an pattern say i'm following some pattern means i should for i should have all those elements in my pattern then only they will accept it as an pattern so why we are using uh, frameworks means uh, because it provides reusability because uh, framework also it's having own predefined boundary it's having its own uh, pattern so the same pattern or framework can be used again and again say in a uh, apple iphone uh, whatever features whatever concepts we implemented in apple 7 that features is still available in uh, apple 14 also so it provides the reusability no need to if they don't want na they may eliminate and they will add new technology they may use to some other gps concept here they may use to some advanced gps concepts uh, they may use to 2g Uh, this uh, apple iphone may support 5g so they will go for upgradation they will add some additional new features but uh, they will try to reuse the existing and modularity so there will be n number of modules the front camera back camera uh, uh, secondary storage first storage primary storage uh, screen everything uh, cpu processors keyboard that screen the concept is each and every thing is separate independent one if one part is not working also they are independent one they are not related to anything else if front camera is not working that will not affect the functionality of back camera if a touch screen is not working that will not affect the yes, any keyboard or tabs buttons each task each feature product concept each module will work independently without depending on other functionality so that increases the flexibility reduces the complexity reduces the coupling increases the cohesion and extensibility so the products the frameworks will have the option for extensibility that's what they are increasing the version 13 14 15 so they will take the existing one as well as they will add some new thing they are extending the features extending the quality performance efficiency and they are releasing the new product so it's having the option for extensibility the extensibility is nothing but the inheritance and inversion of control we can control each and every part we can control or mark direct indirect so everything we can overall control is available with the product inversion of control so those are the benefits of frameworks that's what we are going for newer versions and difference between pattern and framework then what is the major difference between pattern and framework means the design patterns are more abstract than the framework so in patterns will give importance to the various elements each and every element should be there in any particular pattern if you miss one element also they will not accept it as an Uh, element say if you are submitting a uh, uh, template or application even if you won't sign also your application form will be rejected even uh, in a checkbook or check if some uh, overwritten is happening or some column is not filled out it will be check will be bounced or check will be rejected so in patents because patents are followed in the military uh, rules and regulations are strictly followed in patents so each and every component is very highly given importance in case of patents so it is more abstract each and every attribute plays as an important role but in framework uh, it's having the flexibility they may eliminate some unwanted things they may add some uh, necessary things the same way design patterns are smaller and artificial elements than frameworks the patterns are considered in the um, project wise Yeah, for a particular project, we'll go for a particular pattern. But in case of frameworks, within the framework, we'll have n number of patterns. They may use factory patterns, singleton pattern, read-only patterns. There are some different varieties of patterns. So in the framework, 
uh, if they are using 10 components, each component may follow different, different patterns. So we can say framework is an superset. Within a framework, we'll have a number of patterns. And design patterns are less specialized than frameworks. So you say, for example, if you go for the, what is that? We are going for intellectual property, na, IP. And so if you take uh, Indian intellectual property rights, we are filing the, we are publishing the papers as well as we are filing the patents. So the patent filing, it's called a copyright. So we'll, they will say, if you are using Apple, na, above that you can see a circle with C. It means copyright protected or any name is copyright protected. Any brand is copyright protected. So that copyright protection, logos, uh, names, that cannot be repeated, that should not be reused because they are registering their uh, company name or a product uh, with the intellectual property of India or intellectual property of Australia, New Zealand. So we are filing a patent for copyright purpose so that uh, we are claiming that it is our own product. We are the owner, sole proprietor of the particular brand name. Say Sun Networks is a brand name, Apple is a brand name, JJ is a brand name. So nobody cannot use that particular Windows is an copyright protected. So for copyright protection purpose, we are going for and uh, frameworks. Uh, what is the patterns are used for small patterns? Used for really it's a very pattern. It's mostly many patterns. And in design patterns, uh, usually the Australian patterns are design patterns. So if I am uh, designing a fridge or if I am designing a uh, mini fridge, so the my mini fridge model with the unique features, I can register on my name. And the design uh, patterns, they will not ask you uh, how it will function because it is a design alone. I am making a diagram or logo or a model. In design patterns, they will ask only the design. What are the features, specifications, that's all whether it will work, not work, usable, not usable, that is, that is beyond the control. So the design patterns are less specialized compared to the frameworks. The framework should work, it should perform, it should accept some input, process, and it should produce some output. Then only it is called framework, Fra framework of our family of products. But in design pattern, you will propose some design, I will draw something, I will register, this is my design nobody should not use. So that is a design pattern. Functionality is not important, but in case of frameworks, they will check for the performance. What is the voltage? What is the configuration? What is the specification? How many users can use? How long it will work? All those things should be clearly stated while going for the uh, copyright registration. So these are the main differences between patterns and frameworks. So we can say, the framework is super set of patterns, but patterns are used in a different aspect and frameworks are used for different aspects. Design patterns are more abstract, abstract in the sense only the attributes, functions, uh, major functionalities alone considered. And design patterns are smaller than architectural elements of the frameworks. So the small design patterns focus on only the specifications or components or template content. But um, in frameworks, we are considering the functionality, input, process, output, acceptance, testing, everything. But the design patterns, only the diagram is registered under some person. So these are the main differences. So any doubt so far? I think uh, according to the course coordinator, the portion for uh, IA1 is fixed up to pat patterns and frameworks models and all not mentioned. And already we discussed uh, um, what is UML, the UML vari versions. We discussed UML 1.0, 1.1, 1.3, 1.4, 2.0 is industry standard. So and, uh, 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 this class diagrams and uh, different types of UML diagram, these are not coming in this internal. Huh? No, 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 it's, uh, it's there. And already we discussed the static diagrams and dynamic diagrams. Uh, we discussed the nine diagrams also. So and these can are you the clarify this um, uh, IA1 portion? Yeah, 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 one, one minute. 
so we already discussed the nine diagrams so we are the class diagram use case diagram activity sequence collaboration stage chart component and deployment diagrams these diagrams we can categorize the class diagrams and uh, a deployment diagram a component diagram will come under static diagrams static means uh, it won't change we will not uh, it won't accept input and it won't do any process it won't produce any output it is like a declaration part so the class diagram that uh, in class diagram will have only the class name attributes and functions it uh, it won't change the class structure is fixed the okay. uh, what are the variables and attributes in a class and the class name it's all fixed it cannot change during run time so the class diagram and the deployment diagram will come under static models and if you take use case diagram activity diagram sequence diagram collaboration diagram stage chart diagram uh, that will accept some input and they will do some process and they, they will change during run time so that that is called dynamic diagrams so the nine diagrams will categorize into static models and dynamic models and if you take the class diagram we already discussed to represent any class we will go for class diagram so we know what is our class name what are the attributes what are the functions but if you want to represent in an diagrammatic form we will go for class diagram so what are the things which should be there in a class diagram means a class is a set of objects that share the same attributes operations and relationships so from one class we can create n number of objects say if i am creating class student with the name usn number of subjects and the functions like internal marks external marks overall cgpa attendance so like that uh, we fix the class uh, the attributes and operations are fixed and it is represented by a uh, mathema is rectangle so you will use uh, a rectangle symbol with three uh, rows the first row will contain the name of the class then attributes and functions it shows the structure of your software the three components of a class diagram is top middle and bottom so we'll have three rows so each row will represent each one so top will have the class name and middle show the attributes the bottom uh, third column will show the class operations or functions so here login uh, say for example here they are using the functions like login form username and pin number the functions are uh, login details and submit so the class name is login form and the attributes used in that particular class is username and pin number and what are the functions you are performing now uh, login details and submit button and if you take the next class login controller no attributes only validate function alone performed and if you take uh, the third one customer information class in the customer information class we have username pin number address of the customer and login details one function three attributes so here uh, it's a, a complete class contains all the information the second one no attributes third one uh, name as well as attributes as well as function so while uh, designing a class uh, we have to uh, consider what are the define the characteristics and the structure of the class display the middle of the uh, uh, rectangle symbol will be used to, to represent all the attributes functions and everything so the attributes are username pin and username pin and address and the operations uh, here means the various functions the services provided by the class displayed in the bottom of the uh, rectangle so will the here the functions are login details and submit to a function get login details function and if you take the use case diagram uh, here it shows a set of use cases and actors and their relationship so it will show what are the use cases use cases means the various functions we are going to perform and actors means the end users whether the person is a student registrar librarian or faculty so the various human beings are called actors and the relationship what is the relationship between the user and the functions students what are the functions they can access faculty is what are the functions they can access the administrator what are the functions they can access and address the static view of the system so in use case diagram also we will view the static 
in a particular state what are the actions performed so here actor means user or someone or something outside the system that interacts with the system so if some human being who is interacting with the system not they are not part of the system they are the users of the end users of the system it must be a noun and it is represented by the stick man a stick figure or stick uh, stick man is used to, to represent the actor or the human being and if you take the use cases a sequence of actions it must be verb it is represented by the vowel symbol so we are using the vowel symbol to represent the functions the relationships illustrate the connection among the model elements so we are using an arrow symbol with an uh, direction single direction or bi direction unidirectional or bi directional so bi directional means both the sides uh, from and to both the sides will have the arrow mark and it is created to visualize the interaction of the uh, your system with the outside world how the system is interacting with the uh, human being the system is a machine or the project is a software how the software is interacting with the users say for example if you take the atm machine uh say here the stick figure is represented using an customer customer means any person who is having account uh, he is having the passbook checkbook along with the credit card debit card he is having an account valid account maybe uh, savings account or current account or um, home loan some account he is maintaining with the uh, bank he is the customer any human being is the customer and if you take the atm machine Uh, we are performing the following operations with the at machine we have the login process withdrawal process check the balance change the pin number and um, we can create the um, print out mini statement and uh, we can deposit money so these are all the functions we can perform in any atm um, machine so here the various customers are customer means any account holder and the cash depositor he is also a customer and the printer here the printer means uh, the person who is taking the mini statement or he may be the administrator or supervisor or a accountant or he may be the bank manager so they are all the end users who are using the systems and what are the functions the system is performing means it allows you to log into the system we can withdraw the money from the system and withdraw process check balance process change the pin number process so these are the processes the processes or functions are represented within oval symbol say the withdraw function is accessed by the customer so the customer is accessing the withdraw function so it is a unidirection so the input is given by the customer to the withdraw function but uh, the withdraw function cannot give any input to the uh, end user it, it it will produce only the print out or it will show you the result on the monitor so the users are customer printer and cash uh, depositor and the various functions they mentioned are withdraw process check balance change pin and login process so this is the simple use case diagram easy to remember only three notations L association line with the direction unidirection and the various functions general functions like login withdraw credit debit uh, balance mini statement change pin and the users are customer cashier and printer the same way you can draw the use case diagram for payroll process here the uh, payroll means if a person is working in an organization if a person is working in an organization every month uh, his salary will be credited um, in a bank so they have to process how many days he worked how many days he taken leave all those things they will check accordingly they will calculate the salary so here actors are employee and accountant so the use cases are count leave how many days what is how many working days in a month whether 28 days or 30 days or 31 days out of which how many days he worked how many days he taken leave and disperse salary and check the loans whether he already taken any loans and calculate the provident fund prepare the income tax returns calculate the house rent allowance hra and check the salary so those parameters will be checked accordingly the salary will be calculated and uh, what is his uh, total salary is 10000 na how many days he taken leave accordingly deduct the salary and if he taken any loan of some 5 lakhs deduct 5000 from the salary 
and a PF a provident fund he has to pay thousand rupees that also you detect and he need to pay tax so if his tax is around ten thousand every month you deduct a thousand rupees from the tax so all those things all the deductions will be made and all the credits will be made and the net salary total salary will be calculated so those processes should be done so these are the attributes that should be counted and uh, accordingly the functions attributes will be created using classes so here they given you the uh, corresponding use case diagram so here also we have two stick figures one is customer another one is the call uh, the person accountant so for a particular uh, customer what are the things he can access now he can uh, customer he can take leave and he can count this number of leaves and how much salary he got a disposed salary and check loans you can check whether he is having any loans or not he can check the calculate the pf also he can prepare the income tax returns and he can check the salary also the hr person or the uh, human resource manager they will calculate the hra so these are the functions accessible to the customer these are the functions accessible to the accountant or auditor so like that uh, the actually that uh, names should be written inside the oval symbol or it can be written outside the oval symbol also and we can use the labels also so the diagrams are very simple you have to remember and draw the diagrams so if you take other diagrams activity diagram stage chart diagram it's having different notations <coughs> i think uh, for um, for the i8 test the no sequence diagram included i think only class diagram and use case diagram mentioned so the use case diagrams are very easy you have to remember one stick figure one uh, head two legs and one two hand and oval symbols and while drawing any diagram please use scale as well as a pencil and the la labels can be written using pen but uh, when it is a diagram diagrammatic representation any diagram should be drawn uh, not free and drawing only you have to draw, uh, draw with a professional way you have to use a scale and pencil proper scale and proper pencil you have to use the proper notations the arrows should be there lines should be drawn using uh, scale and no overlapping of lines and each uh, function should be drawn properly using oval symbol some uh, gap should be given and the function name should be properly written stick figure should be drawn and uh, there should not be any overlapping clash clash of flow so use scale and pencil identify the proper classes and objects accordingly you draw you can place the users anywhere but uh, no overlapping no clash of lines even in flow chart data flow diagram use case diagram no overlapping so any doubt uh, in what is use case diagram and class diagram is an graphical or standard language for visualizing for visualizing specifying constructing and documenting the artifacts of a software system so it is an uh, definition given by wikipedia as well as uh, i think is4 standard or ieee standard standard definition this uh, same statements you can write or you can write uml uml is a unified modeling language it is a graphical representation used to, to represent the object oriented concepts it's not a language it is a design tool so you can write the same definition or you can draw write your own definition also and if you take the history of uml we already discussed in an oops law conference and the iwa jacobson rumba and push they proposed uh, three papers uh, the conference was conducted during 1980s and 1990s 
so during that time when the object oriented programming languages like the small talk simula c++ uh, even python was introduced during 1990s during 1990 itself python language was introduced uh, that is also based on object orientation only so when the object oriented languages were uh, introduced started uh, used by the programmers that time there is no proper uh, diagrams available to represent the object oriented concepts like classes objects inheritance you representing those concepts using flow chart using entity relationship diagram is very difficult so people were thinking of how to represent the concepts that time uh, bush proposed um, the he proposed to use case models and uh, rumbuck proposed object modeling concepts and uh, jacobson proposed uh, the use case diagrams and object uh, object tree concept so i think uh, bush only proposed nine diagrams so those concepts all three people's uh, bush na six diagrams and uh, rumbuck uh, omt concepts uh, object diagram uh, and the class diagram concepts and object iwa jacobson's object oriented software engineering and use case diagrams so six diagrams from bush one diagram two diagrams from uh, rambak and uh, use case diagram from iwa jacobson all three together all put together total nine diagram concepts but each one is having its own advantages and disadvantages and they eliminated the disadvantages and they unified all the advantages and they created a unified model called unified modeling language bush was uh, bush uh, he proposed to six diagrams so all the six diagrams are useful for the design and omt object management technique by rambuck and object oriented software engineering concepts by jacobson and use case models are useful for analysis purpose so the bush six models six diagrams are used for design purpose and uh, use case diagrams and object modeling techniques proposed by uh, rambuck and iwas iwa jacobson were so useful for design so we have analysis and design analysis and design purpose only we are using uml concepts and we know the how during 1997 Uh, the UML 1.0 was proposed by unifying all the three technologies, and 1.1 was standardized during 1997. 1.3 was uh, revised during 1999. 1.4 was revised using uh, standardization and uh, industrial ind industrialization aspects during 2000. And 2004, UML 2.0 was proposed uh, by Uh, rational rose software corporation rational rose software corporation they are the owner of licensed version of the rational rose uml 2.0 it follows industry uh, industry 4.0 standard why we need a uml concepts means uh, the uml can be used to, to support your entire life cycle because while when you create any project it's having its own life cycle stages analysis design coding testing implementation revision all those things so if you follow the pipet methods it will give you the flow automatically say if you join the lkg in school automatically will be promoted to uh, ukg first standard second standard third standard 12th ug 4 years pg 3 years phd 3 years so you are coming through on systematic approach automatically you know what is the standard what are the things we need to do Uh, to promote from one year to next year so they, it provides a systematic approach a standardized rules and regulations and concepts the interaction of your specialized application with the outside world use case diagrams is useful how the users are interacting with the system that can be represented by using use case diagrams your interaction with the the projects uh, interaction with the end users and visualize object interaction sequence diagrams and collaboration diagrams so when an object is processed in a function how the sequence of act is happening what's happening in each and every function can be represented by using sequence diagram as well as collaboration diagram 
the structure of your system, the overall structure of your project can be easily represented using class diagram. The view the system architecture by looking at the defined package. If you the project is very big, it's having so many modules. So you can go for the projects package. A package means a complete package, or we can say it is a family pack. So there will be some in, set of inputs, processing steps, so many options, and uh, producing the output, generating the reports. So many uh, analysis, analytics can be done. The components of your system, various components, input components, output components, processing components, databases, other uh, Wi-Fi components, cloud components, internal external storage, uh, end users, the deployment area, the overall configuration, LAN configuration, everything, entire setup can be easily viewed using component diagram. And what is a diagram means? We know a diagram is a, it's a diagram, it's a graphical representation, or we can see it is a model. Or a, a diagram means a figure or picture. Or a, with, a, it's not a, it's not a textual information, it's a graphical or diagrammatic form. We won't use alphabets or no sentences in diagrams. The diagrams will give you only the pictorial view, picture of your project. A diagram is a graphical means to view the system spots. It will show the various components of your project or a system in a pictorial or diagrammatic form. We know very well there are nine diagram, eight diagrams. Actually, we have nine diagrams. Uh, the eight diagrams are cat categorized into, we will model the following five diagrams only, say use case diagram, activity diagram, sequence diagram, collaboration, and class diagram. And the other UML diagrams that can be modeled in rational rules. State chart diagram, component diagram, and deployment diagram. Because initially we need to identify the classes, then we have to identify the objects, we have to generate the objects, then you have to put the, it's like a simulated model. It's like networking, IoT design, Cisco packet tracking. We will take the components, put the pad components, then we'll make the interactions. It's like a graphical design. And if you take the behavioral diagrams out of eight diagrams, the following diagrams comes under behavior. Behavior means function or methodology. Your functions can be easily represented using these four diagrams. Say the sequence diagram will show what are the sequence of activities going on while placing an order, whether it is a normal order or special order, how to pay the money, how to deliver the product, dispatch, the sequence of a login, place, identify the order, choose the order, place the order, do the payment process, and get the deli uh, product delivery and close the process. So sequence of activities will be easily mentioned using sequence diagram. And the collaboration diagram will show how the various components, input component, processing component, output component, how they are collaborating. Say if you are withdrawing on money, you are logging in, you are giving the PIN number, the PIN number should be validated in your, uh, uh, from the backend database. And once the PIN number is validated, you are choosing the credit process. Then uh, how to place the money, it has to check the money. Then it will accept the money. That Then your balance will be updated. Then it will retrieve the balance updated from the backend database table. And that, will, uh, that it will generate the receipt and it will show your current balance. So how the front-end, back-end processing modules are collaborating with each other to complete a process that can be easily represented by using collaboration diagram. And the state chart diagram will show you in a particular state, how, what are the components involved in the process, how they are interacting, how the sequence of events are happening, what are the events happening, who are all the functions uh, interacting with each other to complete the process. The current state of a process can be easily represented by using state chart diagram. The activity diagram, we will represent one activity, whether it is a credit process or debit process or balance alone, one event. Event means yes or no condition or do or no credit or, uh, or debit or done or not done. So that is called event process. So one activity while performing a single activity, what are the processes happening that can be represented by using activity diagram. So here the sequence diagram will come under interaction diagram and uh, say the sequence diagram, collaboration diagram and state chart diagram will come under 
behavior diagram so behavior means functional uh, functional behavior while performing and function how it is uh, done uh, can be represented using behavior diagram interaction diagram means how one function is interacting with other other functions how a credit process is retrieving the data from the tables or how the front end is interacting with the back end so the interaction among the uh, internal processes is represented using interaction diagram so these are the nine diagrams you have to remember already we, so the class diagram also you have to say what is class diagram and you have to mention the notation how it is represented and uh, the general notation and with an example say if you take a uh, year login process so you generally mention class name uh, class attributes and class functions then you take an example then you mention in an uh, login process this uh, this is the login uh, class name attributes functions and uh, we already discussed some uh, diagrams also say the customer order management system what are the classes involved what is the base class what is the derived class uh, that diagram also you can mention and in the use case diagram also you have to say what is use case diagram definition and what are the elements involved in the use case diagram actor as in stick figure and use cases as an oval symbol and uh, relationships as in the unidirectional or bidirectional then you take an example as atm system then you give the use case diagram for atm system so whenever a question is asked based on class diagram object diagram sequence diagram you have to define what is what what are the notations we are using then you take an example then you draw the corresponding on example diagram because the marks will be given for definition explanation notations and example then the diagram actual diagram drawn the marks will be split among themselves whenever you draw any diagram or any symbol you should use pencil and scale no free hand drawing will be accepted so any doubt so far deepthi ishra fatima any doubt so just you go through the pptis i will share it with you and you go through the relevant pptis also so whenever any question is once again we will uh, revise one more class also i think tomorrow onwards if people are coming to the college na so we'll have one more class also when you are having free time tomorrow is friday saturday okay saturday friday saturday so if people are coming to college we'll have one more revision class also and how the questions will be asked it means so the questions will be asked say for example explain what is class diagram what is the role of class diagram explain with an example or explain with an atm system or explain with uh, by taking the library book issue process so they will give you a particular context so based on that context you have to draw the diagram and explain so most of the questions will be asked based on the concepts not uh, history of uh, uml uh, not the general explanation uh, based on the topics say for example they may ask you uh, what is the role of bush in the uh, use case modeling concepts and uh, explain the macro and micro level processes of rambak and uh, what are the elements from center macro level process the same way they will ask you what is the main difference between object oriented software engineering and object oriented business engineering and uh, explain the concepts using object tree object tree means it belongs to iwa jacobson so uh, they uh, because of the three models uh, three methodologies bush rambak and jacobson based on those three people's methodologies the questions may be asked they will ask you through the author name or through their methodology if it is uh, rambak its uh, methodology is omt object modeling concepts they may ask you explain object modeling techniques 
what are the three uh, elements what are the what are the four uh, four elements and three parts and they may ask you uh, based on uh, bush what are the models proposed by bush and explain the macro and micro level concepts what is the main difference between them or they may ask you what is the use case modeling and uh, how it is useful for uh, object oriented software engineering explain with a real time example you can write any example any relevant example any known example so based on the three methodologies they may ask you question or in general the next topic is uml what is uml what are the dynamic models and static models available in uml I explain the uml and its stages say what is 1.1 2.1 3.1 it's all theoretical aspects that you should remember and you have to say why, why what is a unified modeling language why it is called a language so any question direct indirect twisted form they will ask you but the questions will be from the syllabus from the topics maybe question may be direct or indirect they may ask you with some real time example or based on the uh, the same examples what we discussed atm or the order management system or uh, the railway reservation system so the same uh, what uh, the same uh, uh, examples may be given or they may give you some different example also based on some railway reservation or online flight booking process or library uh, issue and uh, issue and return of books so like that any scenario they will give or it may be student uh, mock sheet processing uh, student course registration process so any scenario they may give the thing is uh, whatever you want try to understand one more, one particular scenario the same scenario just you replace the attributes and functions or you try to understand the context example because if people are second year only they will not ask you much uh, different uh, case study maybe uh, only the student you use case modeling or atm transaction modeling or library return and issue of books or flight on, uh, online registration and cancellation like that a very small small example only the thing is our student course registration process or students course mock registration mock generation process or patient monitoring system some uh, well known example only you try to understand the domain because uh, we don't know who, uh, how they are going to set the question so just try to understand the concept and uh, write accordingly but the answers are what is provided to you through the material or through the book but uh, the thing is you have to try to read and understand the question that's all if you understood the question the answer is uh, we already all discussed you can write it on your own also and uh, many of the definitions are all are uh, no fixed definitions only the uml uh, definition nothing else uh, all are uh, you can write the answers by using the keywords based on your understanding in your own words we were no definition is uh, as per the wikipedia or as per the ieee standard no proposed uh, fixed definitions for anything only uml uh, the definition is given uh, whatever question you are answering according to the mark you have to write the answer if the question is five mark question you read the question write the heading of the question according to if it is a differentiate go for the differentiation uh, a table or column with left hand and right hand side what is the difference between ooc and oob what is the difference between bush technology and jacobson technology or what is the difference between macro and micro what is the difference between patterns and frameworks uh, the difference between behavioral models and static models static models and dynamic models so like that only the based on the, the concepts what we discussed the question may be a differentiation or definition or with example or with the diagram diagrams that's all the concepts are very simple very easy so we won't expect you the same definition same answer from the book you can write the answers on your own definitions any doubt so far to go through the i will share you this material also you just to go through it if you have any doubt again we have one more class tomorrow again we will discuss uh, some direct questions 
patterns, patterns, all those things. Yes. Ma'am, uh, what I was saying in this uh, UML diagrams, we have to read only class and this uh, case, use case diagram, right? Yes, you draw, uh, read the class diagrams and uh, understand the class diagrams concepts and uh, try to go through one or two diagrams of class diagrams and use case diagrams. Okay, yeah, that's all. So the, those two diagrams only. Okay. And the same way in first unit, uh, uh, also we have no messages, associations, composition, that also. Yeah, already you wrote the assignment also. Those definitions also you have to remember. Okay, ma'am. Object orientation, what is class, what is object. Uh, things I mean, we can write all this in our words, ma'am. No? Yeah, you, uh, the answer should be relevant. The, you can use your own words, it's not an issue. The thing is, it should give the meaningful answer. It should be meaningful answer. You can write the, try, the because the course subject is common subject, and people uh, the strength of the class is number of students in this particular subject is 180 plus 60, 240 students. So you are competing with uh, not only the 60 students, you are competing with the 240 students. So you write try to write the answers to the standard. So always there should be some heading, definition, ex explanation example some diagram because our subject is diagrammatic one some diagram some example then ex uh, try to explain the diagram uh, explain the example with, with some other diagram you are going to draw only class diagram object diagram what is that use case diagram or some representations notations and the answer should be very neat clean the way you write also very important take enough space, write some definition, three lines, four lines, then write, give some example, uh, give some explanation, four lines, take some, mention one example. There should be some heading, subheading, and uh, some example, some diagram. You take a complete page for one question, even if it is two marks also. If it is five more question, try to take um, three pages. Don't merge two questions in the same page. Present it, I think, uh, during 10th and uh, plus 2 and all, you might have drawn because you are uh, writing public exam. The way you represent, the way you present the sentences, you take enough time. Don't waste your time. You have enough time. And divide the time among all the questions. If it is 5 marks, that should be 10 more, ten minutes allotted to each 5 more question. If it is 7 marks or 12 marks question, a 12 more question, you have to suppose to spend half an hour time. Well, that is, uh, we have one hour exam, no? one hour, one and a half hour exam. According to the mocks, you divide the time. If you don't know the answer, leave the question, go to the next question. When you are writing the questions in a, in a different order, you always mention uh, the section number and question one. A, one question, A, part A, first question, second question. That's what you mentioned the heading also. No need to write the question. Say you're writing Bush methodology, no? Bush methodology. Uh, use case models. If you mention the question number as well as the title also, it will be easy for doing the evaluation also. Only the IA1, IA2 in final exam also. Easy for us to, this question, this is the question, this is the answer written. Otherwise, the, the, the teacher has to refer what is the question, what is the question number. Okay, this is part A, fifth question, part A, fifth question. The same question is, uh, answer is written. And if you know the exact answer, write the answer with all the subdivisions and diagrams, examples. If you don't know the exact answer, uh, leave, leave the question at present, you complete the remaining questions. At last, you come back to the question, write the answer, relevant answer, uh, based on your understanding. Write some relevant answer based on the subject. Don't leave any question unattended. And write, uh, we're not expecting the same example, same explanation. You can write your, you are college student, professional student. You can use your own words. You can write your own way of writing. We want personalized answers. We don't want the answers from as it is from the PPT or as it is from the book. Okay, any other doubt? So you go through the material. I will share it with you. If you have any doubt, uh, send me some message, personal message. I will schedule you one more class also. We'll have one more revision. Again, we will revise the 
association, composition, the basic concepts, all those things. The thing is, again and again, you just go through the headings and subheadings. What is what? You will remember all the answers. But uh, just before the exam, if you open and read the book, you will get confused. Who is Jagobson? Who is Rambach? Who is uh, Object Tree? What is OMT? What is OOSC? OOAD? Nothing is there in the subject. All are well known. All are already used. The thing is, you need to remember what is what, who said what, what is the notation, what is the representation. That's all. So go uh, go through the material. I will share it with you in the WhatsApp also. I think uh, I created that classroom in different Gmail ID. So go through the material. If you have any doubt, you send me a message. We'll have one more class. And otherwise, if, tomorrow if you are coming, we will discuss in the classroom itself. Okay, any doubt? No, ma'am. Okay, shall we end the class? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so you go through the material, just to read again and again, at least you retake the syllabus and read the topics again and again, you will get some point on your own. You can you can create your own models, not only Iva, Jacobson, Kumbak, Bush, they, they proposed to 40 years before, still we are using it. You can also propose some advanced models and techniques. Okay. We'll have one more discussion uh, if you are in need. Shall I end the class? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am.